I won't lie to you, I have not felt this level of excitement in quite a while. A phone packed with so much technology and innovation at a price point that most of us can afford. In fact, I paid for this myself and I received mine today, 14th of July 2022. I did not even know that they dispatched it, so I got lucky as I know there is a massive backlog. I'm just happy that I've got it in my hands. The specs, the build quality, everything has been so well thought out, almost meticulously planned by a Marvel character, super villain, superhero. I'm not sure which one it is yet, but the Nothing team are so awesome at building hype. Now I've been on this hype train throughout. I've trusted and invested in this brand, buying both the Air One and now the Phone One. This is just my passion for innovative technology. It runs deep within my veins. And now <laughs> I just want to unbox and share my true feelings with you guys. I don't know about you guys, but I want my box intact. I don't like ripping the boxes of any of my products. So this is something that nothing does. If I can give some feedback to nothing right now, um, I would say to them, please make it so the boxes aren't disposable. Um, we want some sort of resale value. Give us uh, normal boxes. All right, so here we go. So it looks like the phone just slots out. And then all we got here is some paperwork. Inside here, you can see it's kind of cool. We've got Type-C to Type-C and paperwork. All right, so here is the main event itself. Wow, that's nice. So here it is in my hands, the Nothing Phone One. Now, the first thing that hits me is the design looks amazing. Yes, no doubt, but it's light. It's 193 grams and only 8.3 millimeters thick. Yeah, it does kind of feel like an iPhone, um, although it's much lighter than an iPhone. And at the bottom of the smartphone, we have a single speaker, Type-C port, microphone, and a SIM card tray. I believe it is a dual 5G SIM card tray. So no micro SD card, but we weren't expecting that. We've got volume rocker on the side, a few antenna lines. And at the top, we've got another microphone, another two antenna lines. And on the side, we have a power button. So the phone itself is made from Gorilla Glass back, Gorilla Glass front, and the frame is actually made from metal. Now the design is quite reminiscent to iPhone, especially the frame going all the way around, um, but it's not a bad thing. It's lightweight, feels good in the hands, um, and it definitely feels and looks premium in quality. And I'm actually quite surprised to how premium this feels, especially at the price point that this is currently selling at. A really nice looking phone, um, camera modules on the back. So we've got dual 50 megapixel sensors on the back. We've got a primary Sony IMAX 766, and the second sensor is an ultra wide, and that's the Samsung JN1 sensor. And you do have optical image stabilization in the main sensor and the ability to shoot 4K. And that is all I need. So I'm really interested in the 4K video capabilities. Turning it on for the first time, I'm literally keeping that power button pressed. Now someone else on Twitter received a phone, or oh, nice startup, and theirs was totally dead. My one appears to have some power, which is good. Now we do have a 6.55 inch flexible OLED display, and we do have Gorilla Glass protection on the front and the back, not sure what version. And the screen also supports 120 Hertz refresh. You've got HDR 10 plus, 16 bit color depth, full HD plus resolution. That's 2400 by 1080, and you've got 402 pixels per inch. Brightness 500 typical and peak brightness 1200. And if we have a quick look in settings, you can see an option there for smooth display. So automatically raises the refresh rate from 60 to 120 for some content. You can turn that off. You're going to be 60 hertz all the time. So it's best to keep that on if you want to take advantage of the 120 hertz. Um, dark mode, it says, will never turn off automatically. So dark mode is uh, always on and I, I haven't got no complaints about that. Touch sampling rate is... 240 hertz and the haptic motors are pretty good now i went for the base model 
8 plus 1 to 8 variant. That's enough for me. There is no micro SD expansion, so that is the storage I have to play with. And I think I will be fine with that as I do have a habit of backing up my phones frequently. Now, this phone is powered by the Snapdragon 778G Plus, which is a 6 nanometer processor, um, and that's going to give you a mid range performance. The phone does support dual SIM 5G. You have a pretty good in display fingerprint reader, and it supports face unlock. And this does have all the usual sensors accelerometer, electronic compass, gyroscope, you've got ambient light sensor, proximity sensor, um, a sensor core and a front RGB sensor. Now for audio, you've got three microphones built in and dual stereo speakers. This phone does have a 4,500 milliamp hour battery and it supports 33 watt wired charging. So that's 70 minutes for a full charge and you've also got 15 watts wireless charging and if that wasn't enough you've got 5 watts reverse wireless charging so you could place a pair of earbuds on the back and you can see wow and you can see they are immediately charging now this phone has an ip53 water resistant rating now let me tell you what that actually means ip53 is just splash proof really um, it's not even properly rainproof. So take that with a pinch of salt. Forget that it's got an IP53 rating. This phone is not water resistant. Just keep it away from water. Keep it away from steam. Don't take it in the shower with you or anything like that. This doesn't have an IP68 rating and IP53, it's barely splash proof. So on paper, IP53 sounds good, but in reality, it's very basic protection against splashes. So obviously this phone does not come with a charger. So I'm gonna plug my own charger in. And I just want to see what sort of effect we get when we're charging. That was nice. Yeah, let's do that again. Wow. So Glyph Interface is really cool. I haven't had a chance to play around with it. I've literally just unboxed this phone. Now, I just want to give you guys a quick walkthrough of the camera app. Now, first of all, slow motion mode, you have the option to select 1080p or 720p and the frame rate is locked to 120 FPS. In slow motion mode, you can zoom in 2x and continue your slow motion videos. Now, if we go to video mode, the highest resolution you can shoot is 4K at 30 FPS. So 30 FPS is locked at 4K. If we tap it, it goes to 720p, and that's when 60 FPS becomes unlocked. Um, and you can see the options right there as I tap it. 1080p, 60 FPS max, or 30. And then 4K, you can only have 30. If you select HDR, it's going to drop the resolution down to 1080p. So you can't shoot 4K HDR videos. HDR is limited to 1080p and it's also limited to 30 frames per second. If I tap that, you can also shoot 720p HDR videos. If I switch off HDR, then you can unlock it to 4K max. Other options you have, you can turn image stabilization on or off. Of course, um, you want to leave that on. Now, whilst you're filming 4K, you have the option to zoom in 2x and zoom out. And you can also take pictures. So that's where you're limited. You can also pause the video or stop recording. Um, if we activate the wide angle lens, you can still shoot 4K max and 30 FPS is locked. And you can take that down to 720p. So exactly the same resolution. And when you're filming 4K with the wide angle lens, you can't then change the lens. You only have the option to take pictures. So let's stop recording, zoom in 2x, and then record 4K 30. You have the option to at least zoom back out. So that's quite handy. Now let's jump to photo mode and I'll show you all the options you have. First of all, if we tap over here, you can see you've got settings, you've got your filters, you've got your resolution, you got your motion photo on or off, and then you've got your aspect ratio, be it four by three or 16 by nine. Now, if you want to change the resolution, you're just tapping on the 12 megapixel and that switches immediately to 50 megapixels. I really like how they implemented this. It's taken an element from iOS and has made it better. I really like this, the easy option to switch between the 50 megapixel and 12 megapixel. You have the option for wide angle shots and you can do 2x as well. Quickly show you what filters you have. So original, West, Palmer. I'm just going to go through them. I'm not even going to mention them now. So you can see a whole bunch of built-in filters that you can use. 
should you wish to. So in portrait mode, you can change the aspect ratio and also you can use filters while in portrait mode. You can also adjust the bokeh effect and that you can see it working fine. And when you tap on more, you've got time lapse, pano, macro and expert mode. So from my initial tests, really liking the camera, really liking the software, um, I have taken some pictures and videos and I'll put some samples up on the screen. This is 4K at 30 FPS with the Nothing Phone 1. Um, apparently we do have image stabilization. I can't wait to see. I can't wait to see what the video quality is like. So this is also a quick mic test. We are shooting 4K at 30 FPS, 1X. This is now 2X. Another note for yourself. If you switch HDR on, it drops the resolution down to 1080p. So if you want to shoot in 4K, you need to leave HDR off. Front facing camera shooting 1080p at 30 FPS. That is the maximum resolution and frame rate possible with this front camera. Okay, so I just want to walk you guys through the Glyph interface. So you can access it from settings, tap on Glyph interface. You can switch the feature completely on or off from here. You can actually set the brightness level to your own comfort zone. We've got ringtones, and we've got a whole bunch of ringtones that you can select. Um, there are 10 built-in nothing ringtones. If you can imagine, you can have a separate ringtone for each contact. So just by looking at that effect, you will recognize who's calling you. Um, I think that's great. Now this also natively supports custom ringtones and I have imported around 10 tracks here, uh, MP3 files, which I can use as ringtones. To add a sound, you just tap on add and you go to your downloads or your audio section and you can grab any music file you want. I'll give you a quick taste of what these sound like. So I'm already a big fan of the Glyph interface. No, it's not a gimmick, guys. It's actually really, really well implemented. Every effect you see on the back also corresponds with a vibration. So not only does it look good, it feels good as well. It's an incredible effect, which can be used to identify different contacts. So it's not just aesthetically pleasing, it can be quite useful too. So nice to be able to import your own MP3s with ease. But the only thing here is it's gonna play the start of the track as the MP3. You can't actually select a certain section of that song. What would have been nice is if we were able to edit a certain part of the track to use as an MP3. Um, yeah, there are ways around it. You could cut the MP3 file yourself, but if we had a native way of doing it from here, that would have been awesome. So that's your ringtones. You've also got different notification sounds. So if you tap on notifications 
Again, you've got 10 sounds by nothing and you can add your own notification sounds if you want. Okay, so I'm gonna quickly go through these with you as well. Notification sounds, guys. Okay, so those were your notifications. You've got charging meter on. So every time you plug in the charger, you're gonna see a charging meter appear at the bottom and it lets you know how much battery is left in the phone. We've got Google Assistant slash feedback. So every time you trigger the Google Assistant, the Glyph will respond accordingly. Now flip to Glyph, I've actually got switched off. If you want a quick way of putting your phone on silent, you just activate that. And every time you place your phone face down, the phone will then be in silent mode, um, but the glyphs will be active. So you can actually see who's calling you without looking at the screen, etc. And finally, you can set specific times for the glyph interface to be active. So that's again, a very useful feature. So we're checking out the COD graphic settings. You can see very high and max are both selectable at the same time, which is, which is pretty good and I've got it set to realistic. So let's just check out some gameplay. A quick mention of the dual speakers. One is bottom firing and the other one is on the earpiece. We're capturing Alpha. Enemy taking C. We captured A. Enemy has Charlie. We've taken the lead. Enemy taking B. Friendly Predator missile inbound. Contact with enemy. Target down. Enemy contact. Targets in sight. Contact with enemy. Sentry ready to deploy. Capturing Bravo. Contact with enemy. Enemy in sight. Track is ready. Tango down. We captured Bravo. Enemy in sight. Enemy is sentry gun deployed. Enemy is Losing sight. Bravo. Enemy is Losing A. Lost Alpha. So as you guys just saw, the gameplay is pretty good on this. Call of Duty Mobile plays very smooth and the graphics look pretty good. Um, phone has not heated up much. It's just slightly warm to the touch. Quickly check out a few things. So DRM info shows Google Widevine level one. And if I open up CPU-Z, you can check out the clock speeds and you can see it's running Adreno 642L. And if we go to system, you can see we're running Android 12 and there is some software and kernel information. I'm gonna run a very quick speed test. And in the Wi-Fi speed test, we've achieved download speeds of 62 and upload speeds of 18 megabits per second. And this is typically the top speeds we achieve in our office. Looking at the benchmarks, beginning with Geekbench multi-core score of 2934, single core score 715. So here are the results for the Antutu benchmark test. You can see we've achieved 571K. Now what I wanna look at now is the temperatures. So starting temperature, 35 degrees. And after completing the test, you can see the temperature is at 37 degrees. So nowhere near overheating. So there you have it guys. That was my first look at the Nothing Phone One. Going over some of the main features, glyph interface, custom ringtones, a full camera walkthrough and lots, lots more. At this stage, I feel my money has been well spent. The Phone One is an absolute marvel to work with. The performance of the Snapdragon 778G Plus is very good. Probably one of the best mid-range gaming performances I have seen so far. Touch sampling is a bit on the lower side, but not really noticeable when gaming. OLED display is absolutely gorgeous. I love the OS. It's 
totally minimalistic, but it gives you a stock-like experience and it has easy access to everything you need. You can tell a lot of thought went into the software as well as the hardware. Now I don't see nothing taking many shortcuts here, apart from not telling us what version of Gorilla Glass we have on the front and back. I'm sure it's not going to be Victus, um, but I'm hoping it's at least Gorilla Glass 6. Now one issue I've come across is the face unlock. It's a bit temperamental, as you can see, face not recognized. It doesn't work every single time, and I'm sure a firmware update will fix this. Fingerprint sensor, on the other hand, is awesome. It's nice, fast, and accurate. Other than that, I've not come across any other negative points. Um, the gaming is great. The performance is super fast in no matter what I do. There is no overheating issues. The phone barely gets warm to the touch. Highest temperature I've seen is around 45 degrees, and that's with an hour of non-stop gaming. The cameras are actually surprisingly good. Amazing results for both photos and videos. I especially like the 4K video quality, and the stabilization was superb. Now I can sum this up in a more simple way. Take it this way. If iPhone and Pixel had a baby, it would be the nothing one. When I'm holding the phone in my hand, it feels like an iPhone. When I'm taking photos, it feels like a Pixel. When I'm shooting videos, it feels like an iPhone again. Software is Android, but elements of iOS is there. The very useful, tiny elements, and I love how they implemented them. For example, changing the camera resolution with a single tap. This phone was not made to compete with other mid-rangers. This was made to defeat them all at once. I can't think of a better phone you can buy right now that beats what the Nothing One has to offer for this price point. Even if you take away the Glyph interface, which some of you are calling a gimmick, it's not a gimmick, it's actually useful and a pleasure to use. I believe this is the best mid-ranger you can buy right now under 400. My full detailed review is coming soon, so stay tuned because there is still lots to learn about this phone. My SIM card is in the phone right now I am daily driving this every single day for at least 30 days or maybe longer because I like it that much. And if there's anything specific you want me to test or compare it to, then do let me know in the comments. Meanwhile, I hope you found this video useful. Thank you so much for watching and I hope you all have an amazing day. Peace.